Uh, afternoon, everybody. Um, so my name is Kelly Freebody. I'm here in my capacity as program director of the secondary education program at the university, um, at the Faculty of Education and Social Work here at the university, um, but also as a teacher, as a teacher, high school teacher, um, as somebody who is passionate about education. And I think that people become teachers for lots of different reasons. And some people become teachers because it's not one job, you know, being a teacher in a, in a big, being a Latin teacher in a big private school in the centre of Sydney is very, very different from being a teacher um, in, in a rural area of Australia or a remote area of Australia or a big um, sort of public school in the southwest of Sydney. And so as a, your career as a teacher can take you in lots of different places. And in that sense, it's something that's never boring. It's something that's always challenging in terms of not just you and your sort of personal and social relationships that you have with the people around you in the community that you work in, but also your relationship to the knowledge. Uh, and that's one of the other reasons why I think lots of people become teachers, because as a secondary, as a secondary education specialist, I love my subject areas, and my subject areas are drama and English. And um, one of the things that teaching has allowed me to do is to know those areas in a really different way and in lots of different ways, and to interrogate questions around what it means to be good at that kind of knowledge, and what it means to be able to facilitate that kind of knowledge and that kind of learning in other people. And so it's, it's an incredibly rich career in that sense. Um, so I'm here to advocate for the career as well, um, as give you information about it. Um, but to the information first, and so in case you have any questions about that, um, one of the things that's happened in the last 10 years in this country um, in terms of qualifying to be a teacher is that there is um, now something called the New South Wales Institute of Teachers. I'm not sure if you've heard about it. And what they've done is they've put in place accreditation programs. So there's actually now, as of this year, um, a national body that accredits university degrees um, as to how they train you to be teachers. And all of the University of Sydney programs are accredited. But what that means is, uh, in order to get accreditation, we've had to have certain specific entry requirements for our degrees. So if you're somebody that is in, here in the faculty studying a Bachelor of Arts, majoring in Ancient History, I just want to talk you through the sorts of things that you would need if you were considering applying for a Masters of Teaching program at the end of this degree, whether you do it next year or in 10 years. Um, so in order to train to be a secondary teacher in this country, you actually have to have two teaching areas not just one. Um, and modern history and ancient history are not considered two teaching areas. And I'll just talk you through that. It's one of the, the most common questions that we get. Um, so if you have a major in your Bachelor of Arts in ancient history, um, then ancient history would be your major teaching area. But you also need a minor teaching area. So the requirements for the Institute of Teachers are this, and I actually have a pamphlet there as well for people that don't want to write everything down. But the requirements are that you do six units in your major teaching area in your Bachelor of Arts degree. Um, so that's six units in ancient history. You all have to get eight units, I think, for your major, so you should have that covered. Two of those can be archaeology, okay? And four of them have to be above second year level. For your minor teaching area, your second teaching area, you need to have four units and two of them have to be above second year level. So if you, for example, were thinking that you would be an ancient history and English teacher, you would have to have four units of English. And two of them can be first year units, but at least two of them have to be second or third year units. Okay? Um, in terms of what areas can you couple with, um, English, you can couple with English, drama through performance studies, um, languages, if you speak any other languages. Um, we do train Latin teachers as well. Uh, at the University of Sydney in the Faculty of Education. And again, four units, at least two above second, second year or above, is what you need in that. Um, we, you can couple with mathematics and sciences as well, if you're the sort of person that is ancient history and mathematics. Well, uh, sciences are a little bit more complicated. Um, you need to have four units of your science, say it's biology, but then you also need to have at least a year of another teaching science because you will end up teaching seven to 10 science. And so you need to have some chemistry or physics. But if you have questions about that specifically, feel free to ask me. But the main takeaway message there is you can absolutely, with a major in ancient history, enroll in a master's of teaching to be an ancient history teacher, but you must have at least four units in a second teaching area as well. 
Um, now, most of the people here will talk about what it means to teach ancient history in schools, so I won't go into that in too much detail, but I will talk a little bit about the modern history and ancient history thing. Um, and I, it's funny, I've just had a, a long conversation with our history curriculum coordinator about this with students. And the, the idea is that modern, that modern history and ancient history are HSC subjects. They're taught in year 11 and 12 as specific things. But in year 7 to 10, it's taught as history, which means it's a combination of both things. So as an ancient history trained teacher, depending on the school that you're in, it is very likely that you will end up teaching some junior modern history. Uh, and one of the things that Tim Allender, as our history curriculum coordinator, would say is that part of the idea of that is that epistemologically it's not that different in the sense of it is still, rather than about content of history, there's a really strong focus on the study of history and what it means to be a historian and to work with sources. Uh, and so there is a sense that epistemologically they do marry as syllabuses. Um, I'm sure that there are some differences of opinions as you go through schools, but I think if you want to be an ancient history teacher, you have to be prepared to teach some junior modern history as well. Um, so in, in the sense of the way the program is run here, the Masters of Teaching, and I'm talking about the secondary program with the idea that you actually become an ancient history teacher, we do also have a primary education Masters of Teaching, and you can get into the primary education Masters of Teaching with just ancient history as your area, but you will be qualified to teach generalist primary work. Okay, so primary doesn't say you have to have two areas. You can get in to the program with one area, but you will end up teaching generalist primary. So you will end up in your coursework, you'll study creative arts and English and mathematics and science as well. Um, so depending on the sorts of person that you are and the sorts of reasons why you might want to get into teaching, that might be an option too. Um, in terms of the actual program, the Masters of Teaching program is a fairly rich program. It's a fairly well-regarded program. Um, the assumption is that you have come in with a background in history content, and so there's not a lot of history content. You will get three history curriculum subjects over three semesters, so you will be taught how to teach history syllabus, how to teach historical knowledge, how to teach historical literacy. Um, we also will do coursework in special education, in Aboriginal education, um, in uh, general education, teaching and learning style courses, and you'll do two 20-day practicums, two four-week pracs, and then one 10-week internship at the end. So the program is considered to be two years full-time, but actually you do a three semesters of coursework, and then you do a 10-week internship at the end of that. So you finish around about now, and then you can start teaching um, straight after that. So that's the program. It is a competitive program. You do have to apply to get in, um, you know, but the first step is making sure that you have got the required subjects 